they've gone all to town on the different versions of this wagon and each of them has been done really really well. A big hello to you, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're well and welcome up here to the loft on Weir Yard with me Jenny Kirk and today we're going to be taking a look at the new range of children wagons which have arrived ready to run from Acura scale and these really are a surprising addition to the ready to run market. Now the children wagons really do go back to the genesis of the railways. In fact they predate steam locomotives going way way back to the 18th century where they would have been pulled by horses on the wooden wagon ways. Now children was originally a unit of volume and that was pretty much what these carts were and we'll delve into that in the review video as we go on through but they were updated a little bit over the years but I suppose it's testament to just how versatile and reliable these wagons were that even into the very late 1970s at Seam Harbour there were a few left as internal users to go underneath the staiths to retrieve some of the coal that fell through there because they really were the only wagons that could get around those tight curves and that is quite amazing that these wagons had a lifespan of well well over a hundred years although the design that Acura Scale have done is probably from the 1870s onwards rather than those at the genesis of the railways. Not content at tooling up this really quite iconic prototype, they've also tooled up for a number of detail differences. Effectively, this is at least two, if not more, wagons in the range with a host of different braking levers, greedy boards, and also wheel types to boot. They've got some really quite interesting magnetic couplings, and all in all, this is a very, very out there package from Acura Scale pushing the boundaries of what you can do ready to run. And I'd like to thank them for sending over three different packs to allow us to take a look at the majority of the different detail differences today. We've also got an affiliate link down below to take you to Rails of Sheffield where you can pick these up at what we believe to be some of the best prices available there on the internet. So if you really like the look of the wagons today, do check that out to pick up yours today. But come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Buy, sell or exchange any age or any gauge. Rails will take everything locos, coaches, wagons, track work, controllers, accessories. In fact, they will take absolutely everything. Check them out today at the link below. So come with me and let's take a look at this really, really interesting range of all new children wagons from Acura Scale. <laughs> As part of Acura Scale's Powering Britain range, they've done some pretty iconic wagons. Most recently, the HAA merry-go-round hoppers and all of their various derivatives. They also did the HUO, seen here from the most recent release, and who can forget the MDO MDV, which formed the basis for the very first Monday Club Special Wagon Commission. But I suppose one of the most unusual wagon types is the northeastern area children wagon. And so it was a very much a surprise when Acura Scale announced that they were going to tackle this quite unique wagon and bring it out ready to run. And anybody who's familiar with the children wagons, which maybe you've seen at Beamish or indeed seen at the National Railway Museum, might have thought, that's going to be quite a tough one to do. Well, never ones to shirk a promise. Acura Scale promised to deliver, and they have done 
just that. And I'd like to thank Akira Scale for very, very kindly sending over three different packs of the Children Wagons. And the reason for this is because there are a number of different detail differences that they've tooled up. And hopefully across these three packs, we've got the majority of these different differences, which go to show that they've not only brought out a Children, but they have brought out the versions of the children that allow the variety that would have been seen in the northeast of England for probably well over a hundred years. And it's quite a surprise, and certainly there is pictorial evidence to back this up, that some of these wagons were still in commercial use right through into the late 1970s at somewhere like Seaham Harbour, where they were actually utilised underneath the staithes for uh, collecting up all the coal that had fallen through. And the reason that they were still using these is because they're so small that they were the only wagons that could get around the really tight radii of track. The different versions that Akira Scale have sent over We've got Northeastern Railway P1 Children's Triple Pack, catalogue number ACC2800A, and this is the Northeastern Railway era, and uh, helpfully put on their era too. So I could imagine these running with the J72 from Backman has been uh, available in that very, very pretty Northeastern Railway green. And whilst it might look um, a little bit too pretty to go with these, that's certainly a livery that would match. And also there is the forthcoming TMC G5, which will make a really good accompanier to these as well. And don't forget a whole host of private owner type locomotives from the W4 the B2 packets that come from Hornby. We've also got the Andrew Barclay 2 from the Hatton's Originals range. The other packs that uh, Akira Scale has sent over, we've got the Pontop and Jarrow Railway X Northeastern Railway P1 Children's with early Shilden built Children triple pack ACC 2803D. Again, suitable for the era 2. And then finally, we've got the XSCC National Coal Board Children's Triple Pack ACC 2810K. And it says on there, suitable for Era 4. Although some of the NCB wagons, uh, depending on internal system, could have been seen right through into the 1970s. The box actually is something which doesn't really quite bring home how small these prototypes are. It's the standard size to cure a scale box and that's why it's quite big for what you're going to now see inside. Just three wagons. There's actually room enough quite comfortably for six in a box and if we take these out we do have a certificate, a limited edition certificate for each of these, signed by Stephen McCarran and Paul Isles from Acura Scale. And this is number 177 of 333. So effectively, there will be a thousand NCB wagons in this particular run. And because uh, they come in triples, we've got 177 of 333. We also have, again, a really, really nice and quite comprehensive booklet on the prototype history. And Beamish is probably the best place to go if you want to see these in a prototypically accurate environment. And certainly on the colliery system that they've got set up there, it really does look the part for late 19th century with some of the locomotives that they use there. And of course, these were really came about because way bridges were just not used in the Great Northern coal field in the mid 18th century. Essentially, the technology was too expensive. It was too difficult to maintain, certainly in these industrial kind of places. And really keeping that accuracy would have been really difficult. So because coal has a fairly consistent density, that means that if you fill a wagon with coal each time, it's pretty much the same tonnage of coal that's going into that wagon. And that became the origin of the children as a unit of measurement. Although the later children wagons, they kept the nickname, but did gain a little bit of capacity, either through the use of greedy boards, 
which um, is something that you often see on coke wagons. It's a whole load of staves and cross boards around the top to allow the wagon to be loaded higher and therefore be a bit greedy on the amount of uh, commodity that you could carry within them. Inside here as well, we've got the exploded diagram. It just shows what goes into these, even though they're small, there's a lot of separately fitted parts. And uh, we've also got an assortment of prototype pictures, not just from Beamish, but we've also got um, some here at Seam Harbour, which we mentioned before, giving an idea that these with the HUO type wagon, there in the background in NCB livery, and we've got the children's in the foreground. And there's a lot of options for a really quite small, compact shunting layout that you could do making use of these as a really gritty internal user colliery type layout for the Northeast. Separate out the blister pack. And really, I mean, these are absolutely tiny. I'm just gonna carefully unwrap each of these. The wagons themselves have a very innovative new type of uh, coupling between them and this really is because your standard slimline tension locks really are not going to cut it on something this small and you can already see straight out of the box all three have coupled up quite readily there is quite a large gap between them, but that is just a necessity of uh, model railway layout curves. And in case you're wondering how you're going to connect these to a locomotive, each pack then also comes with a pair of couplings which just go straight into the NEM pocket of your locomotive. And it makes them a really easy attach. So to go with these, something like a uh, Andrew Barclay, and all you have to do is literally just pull out one of the couplings from its NEM pocket and then just slide in carefully the appropriate coupling to match. And that goes all the way back in, just until you can feel it, just click into place. Just like that. Incidentally, these also, so I'm told, match up perfectly with hunt couplings. So if you're already using hunt couplings, these are perfect to be compatible directly with those. And with the locomotive cooked up, it really is just a case of bringing the locomotive close enough to the wagon and they just automatically couple up. If you want to uncouple them, just pull them apart gently. It really is quite easy to do. And you need to get within about maybe 15 millimeters and then you'll just see those couplings automatically jump together. And what you ultimately get is a really nice, very short prototypical rake of these wagons and you can see there the NCB with the NCB locomotive. One thing to note about the couplings is that they're not handed and that means as you can see here if we just carefully uncouple, turn a single wagon round and then couple them back up there's no problem whatsoever with that. In terms of size, there's one of the Acuriscale HUOs, and two of these could quite happily fit inside the HUO and have still space to spare. So you can see very quickly, you can get quite an interesting small shunting train. And if you want to separate these, it's just simply a case of just slowly pulling them apart and those magnets will let go quite readily. Let's take a close look at these wagons. The axles themselves are clipped in to the chassis and we've got all of this detail underneath which denote the bottom doors which uh, a lot of these wagons had. They're not actually dumb buffered, they just don't have buffers. Instead we've just got these rubbing plates on the end of the chassis rails. 
the planking on these is really nicely done. It's an incredibly complicated shape and certainly one which I could imagine proved quite tricky to get right, but a curious gal have managed that. The decoration is not plain black. We've got a number of planks picked out in this gray color. And then inside here, we've also got the planking detail going all the way down to the base. And you can see the chains on that bottom discharge door. This particular wagon has these sort of uh, double spoke wheels, a very, very archaic looking wagon. And certainly these would be perfect, not just with your NCB liveried locomotives, but some of the earlier packs too. You could imagine these going further and further back and maybe even running with a Hornby Rocket or a Rapido Lion. Certainly there are plenty of different choices. They also come with a very characteristic brake lever on one side and it's not poseable, but it looks good enough that it could be. And certainly you could imagine that the braking on these would have been pretty woeful. And on some of the gradients of the poorly laid colliery lines, I can imagine it could get a little bit hairy. Imagine these fully laden and all you've got are these wooden blocks and a lot of willpower hanging on to that to try and stop it from rolling away. In this particular set, all three wagons do look pretty much the same. We've got the same pattern of wheels. The actual printing of the NCB and the number is crisp and clear. We've got different tear weights between them and certainly it really does look good. Also looking at the decoration, they're not all entirely the same. And I suspect that these planks that are in a different color gray are denoting planks that have been replaced as they've uh, either worn or rotted away. And these are very much like Trigger's broom. They might have been uh, decades and decades old, but certainly they got bits and pieces replaced over the years as they wore out. Looking to the next set of wagons, we've got the Jarrow Railway X Northeastern Railway wagons. And certainly the Northeastern Railway were big users of children's in the 19th century, but very quickly whittled that down. Not necessarily by scrapping lots of them, but simply by selling them on to willing industries who wanted to make further use of them. Again, we've got the uh, data sheet, although we don't appear to have a limited edition certificate with these, and I don't think all of the different versions are strictly limited edition. Again, we've got the extra couplings for coupling up your locomotives to these wagons, and actually, if you're using some of the magnetic couplings that are on the market, these are a great way of just supplementing that. They don't go to waste. It's very much apparent once we get this particular set out that we've got a few detail differences. This particular children here is a somewhat different design to that which we've uh, seen in the previous pack. We've still got the brake lever, but it comes up at a slightly different angle. And the hopper is a much different design. You can see the square at top. And it doesn't seem to just go up as much. It's a, a little bit dumpier looking. We've got these wooden side doors, which again, good deal smaller, and we don't have as many outside ribs. And this represents the fact that there wasn't just one design, and Acura Scale have catered for the multiplicity of designs. On some of the wagons, you might find that the magnetic coupling is kind of curled back on itself and just uh, stuck in to the chain. And it's quite easy just to straighten that out. And we can get these now to couple up quite readily. And it's just a quirk of transport that uh, sometimes they do that. It's no big deal and it's really easy to rectify. The printing on these as well is nice and sharp. We've got the PJR, the running number. 460 there suggests that they had quite a large fleet. Again, these feature the same 
double spoke star type wheels and the brake on one side. The final wagon in this set is a perfect match to this, this second one. And looking down, you can see that this has got much thinner sides compared to the slightly chunkier look of these other two. Looking at the final set that Acura Scale have sent over, these are the Northeastern Railway versions. And these represent the wagons as they would have been running actually with the Northeastern Railway. And indeed, they're the first example of Northeastern Railway genuine pre grouping stock that has come on the market ready to run. Again, they just really are quite tiny. And one of the things that I find uh, really interesting about these is the font of the NE. It's uh, a font which became quite big again in the late 60s, early 70s. And I always look at that, and to me, it uh, represents that period. But it's quite interesting to see that the font is probably 100 years older, at least. Looking across these, I know that the range does include some different patterns of wheels. And I was hoping, actually, that some of these might have been a little bit different. But uh, unfortunately, all of these do have the same pattern wheels. So I can't show you some of the sort of S-shaped and the straight spoked, which I believe they have brought to the range. Each of these, again, we've got some detail differences. And I particularly like the different finishes as well. We've got these sort of grey, almost hand-painted, splashed-on patches where the numbers have presumably been changed. And it's a very distinctive livery. It's like nothing that I've really seen much of before. And these would be a great addition to any pre-grouping layout set in the northeast of England. You can also imagine that these would probably also look at home, sold out of use, maybe hired to a colliery, so they might retain the northeastern on there, but actually be mixed and matched in with some of the other types that we can see here. The different packs do quite happily couple up together with each other, and all of these couplings are exactly the same. On the torture test track on Weir Yard, they ran pretty sure-footedly and really had no issues even down to radius one curves. And it's very much apparent with these that they would handle extremely tight curves, probably far tighter than you could find any locomotive happy to go round. I did find, however, when running down the gradient, that they had a habit of squashing up together, and this would look a little bit peculiar on the track. Then when the track leveled off, they would start to hunt a little bit, and the amount of uh, play that the couplings allowed on this did seem to accentuate it somewhat. But I can see the reason why they would choose to have couplings this long, any shorter, and it might prove just a little bit less reliable for coupling them up. And certainly if you needed to get in there and untangle them for any reason, then it might prove just a little bit more difficult. They held the track remarkably well, and this full rake of nine posed no great issue for that Andrew Barclay locomotive that I used, which is otherwise foxed by more than three of a more conventional sized wagon such as the HUO. There was no sign of skidding at all, and certainly I can imagine that these would run even freer, just with a little dab of oil where the axles clip in place. The design that is necessitated by this type of wagon does mean that they have slightly more friction in place, and I suspect that in part that's been left because, as you saw, they don't really yet challenge a locomotive, so it's not going to produce too much drag, but it just helps perhaps to sort out some of that hunting that might otherwise be quite irksome on anything other than bowling green flat track. When it came to propelling them backwards, though, this was quite tricky. 
And with a little bit of experimentation, I found that with the locomotive moving at a dead crawl, it was possible to shunt the train of nine backwards. But anything other than that, and certainly if you tried to send them through point work or around tight corners, then they did seem to uh, ride up over each other and cause a derailment. Again, that's probably more down to the fact that these couplings don't provide any kind of uh, positivity in the propelling move and you're just left with them rubbing against the ends of these chassis rails and that means that they can quite easily end up in a situation where they just interlock and push each other off the track. However, I don't really think that that's going to be too much of an issue. They do look great trundling around the track, even though they are quite light. I think that adding a load perhaps of real crushed up coal would really improve these and a quick brush over with weathering powders too, even just to take the edge off the shine would really help them no end. And there's already been posted some amazing photographs online of uh, new owners of these that have done just that with some great results. And certainly that's something that uh, I may consider for these in the future. So we turn now to the scores. First up is build quality, and actually I'm really impressed at how well these have been put together. They're quite strong and resilient, even though they don't actually weigh a huge amount. And there are a lot of uh, extra details, like this very, very fine chain, which is quite resilient even to my ham-fisted poking around. There's more there as well. These brake levers and brake blocks too stay put. And the wheels, I did have some misgivings when I first saw how these were put together in that maybe these were a weak spot or maybe the axles would have a habit of popping out. But none of that has been realised and actually they've been pretty resilient. The couplings too, I've found, are pretty good at staying put and doing exactly what they're supposed to do. So all in all, there's nothing to fault. So I'm going to give these 10 out of 10. Next up is running quality. This is an area where they did struggle a little bit under certain situations. As said before, they are quite light and that does mean that when being propelled backwards, they did struggle to stay on the track in a long rake. And I think one of the problems is that because they don't have buffers, these chassis rails had a habit on tight curves of getting locked inside each other and that then meant that they would push each other off the track without a great deal of weight there was nothing to stop them from flange climbing when they did that and I was only able to get them to run quite slowly backwards and certainly not around any tight corners or over complex point work. Running forwards they did have a habit of hunting backwards and forwards on the gradients. There is a little bit of resistance in the axles and that does help on level track to keep them all in a nice neat train. But with the amount of slack that there is in these couplings it did show when there was a transition from coming down a gradient and going up again where the wagons would either all telescope back into each other or pull back out apart. So all in all, I'm going to give this a 7.2. DCC fitting is not relevant in these, but the innovation on the couplings is really great to see. It makes a wagon this small incredibly viable, and I like the way that it is fully compatible with a whole range of other magnetic couplings that are on the market, which will be a welcome addition for quite a few people. And I do wonder whether Acura Scale might make their own NEM pocket attaching uh, couplings that are designed in these packs to allow you to couple them up to a locomotive. I wonder if they might make those available as a separate part, because certainly they would be a very, very viable product on the open market for fitting to a whole host of other items of rolling stock and locomotives. I also quite like the fact that they've taken what really would be an incredibly difficult ask for any manufacturer and not only have they made it pretty well, 
but they've also tooled up for quite a few different detail differences and more so indeed even than is here across these three different packs and I'm going to give these an 8.9. On accuracy and quality of finish there really is nothing to fault. They've gone all to town on the different versions of this wagon and each of them has been done really really well. There's not a generic livery even across those in the same pack and to ostensibly the same design with a lot of differences in finish including these planks which have been uh, replaced and uh, you can see here in a different base colour but also the lettering and numbering and even the tear weights do vary from wagon to wagon even if the livery is similar but not the same. When we do look across the different packs that are available we've got a whole host of differences with the lettering, with the numbering and I really do like the attention to detail that back these up against historical photographs that show the real wagons when they were at work. For me there just isn't anything to fault in this area and again I'm going to give them a well deserved 10 out of 10. On value for money I can find these at just a shade under £45 and we do have an affiliate link to Rails of Sheffield to help you find all of the packs that are available at this great price. For a three wagon pack that really is good value for money, albeit that these are some quite tiny wagons, especially when compared to other more conventional wagons that a pair of these quite comfortably sit inside. So I'm going to give these 9.5 out of 10 and that gives us a final altogether score of 45.6 a very respectable score for an amazing and unusual prototype and I'm really looking forward to seeing whether Acura Scale or indeed any other manufacturer run with this early period of Britain's wagons and maybe produce more to go with them. Certainly Acura Scale have provided the internal user wagons for a lot of NCB era layouts but also the internal user wagons and indeed railway company wagons for that elusive pre-grouping period going right back into the 19th century and I'd love to see many more layouts that embrace that really interesting chapter in Britain's railway history. A big big thank you again to Acuriscale for sending over these three packs for review. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative. And a big, big thank you to Acuriscale for sending over these review samples for us to take a good close look at. And don't forget that we've got an affiliate link in the description box down below to go to Rails of Sheffield, where these wagons are available for under £45 for a pack of three. But do hurry, because they are selling incredibly well and some of the different versions have already sold out. But I'm sure that Acuriscale scale will be doing a follow-on run such are the success of these wagons and I'm really looking forward to see what other wagons they've got up their sleeve to announce to bring to the market. If you really enjoyed today's video don't forget to tickle that like button and also share the video too to let others know about this product review and uh, you can also head on over to Patreon if you want to help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see and I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below if you've got any thoughts to share about today's wagons. But until next time this is me Jenny Kirk saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling, bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at Tramfabrik .co.uk. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Family run business purchasing collections for over 50 years. From single items to lifetime collections. No collection is too small or too big. Buy, sell or exchange any age or any gauge. Rails will take everything locos, coaches, wagons, track work, controllers, accessories. In fact, they will take absolutely everything and certainly will not cherry pick the best items. Rails are only a phone call away. Call them now 
for the very best price and get instant cash payment or same day transfer. Check them out today at the link below. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, and Jennifer Horton. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.